Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Reed and today we're going to be going over left bundle branch blocks as the video names suggest. We're going to be going over kind of the pathophysiology of why they occur and we're going to be going over a bunch of fun rhythms that we have here for you in detailing all of the anatomy and physiology. So let's talk about that first, right? Let's talk about what is the criteria for a left bundle branch block via the anatomy, right? Let's really understand this and it'll help you um, better retain that information. And so left bundle branch block is a type of, just like the right bundle, ventricular aberrancy. And what does that mean? A ventricular aberrancy is just a fancy word for saying that the signal that is going through the ventricle is conducted aberrantly or improperly, right? And so we know normally what happens is signal comes down and it gets into the AV node, and the AV node sends that signal down via the bundle of Hiss, the right bundle branch, and the left bundle branch. And so what that allows for is one, a narrow QRS complex that is less than 120 milliseconds, right? Because it's allowing, it's our highway system, it's conducting quickly. And two, it gives us this predictable morphology of our QRS, right? Because we know it's taking that route that is going to send the signal through the ventricles in a predictable pattern. And so in the left bundle branch block, and so in the left bundle branch block, we have an aberrancy that is created when the left bundle, which is right here, is blocked. And so my red X is what happens when the left bundle gets blocked. And so let's talk about what occurs, what changes about our conduction in a left bundle branch block. So in the left bundle branch block, we have signal that from any type of rhythm gets into the AV node to be passed down to the ventricles. So the AV node does that, it gets to the Hiss bundle. It tries to go down the left bundle, but it can't, it gets blocked. But it's able to go down the right bundle, like so, and so we get good depolarization of the territory represented by the right bundle branch, which is the right ventricle. So we get good depolarization there. And how do we then activate the left uh, ventricle, right? The left bundle branch, remember, supplies the septum and the left ventricle, and so in order to depolarize this region, we essentially are going to need this the signal that is spread through the right ventricle to spread over to the left side via the cell to cell gap junctions. And this takes a long time. Notice how long this signal is taking to spread from the right ventricle to the left that was supplied by that faulty left bundle branch that was blocked. And so what I'm getting at is we get all these late forces that are going towards the left ventricle. And so that's going to be kind of characteristic is late signal, late signal traveling from the RV to the LV, so from right to left. So what leads are going to capture this the best? Probably these leads that are looking right at those positive forces that are heading towards them, right? Leads one in AVL. The lateral leads are going to catch that lateral signal, okay? So we'll talk about some of the criteria that we'll see. One, we will see the QRS will widen, right? It'll be greater than 120 milliseconds. Why? Because we are no longer taking that highway system to the to depolarize the ventricles rapidly. And two, we will see what? Late forces in the lateral leads. Let's talk about that, right? Late forces going towards the lateral leads, right? Because we said these forces were gonna be going towards the lateral leads. So that's gonna create a morphology in leads one in AVL that is going to go, our normal depolarization is going to go up, and then as it's trying to come down, it's going to see those late forces, and it's going to create 
kind of the second bump there, it's going to create an R prime in our lateral forces. This is our R prime. And that is what is representing our late RV to LV gap junction to gap junction depolarizing forces is that R prime. So we will see in AVL in lead one, late positive forces that you can sometimes call an R prime. Sometimes it'll be a little bit slurry. It'll just be kind of like up and then instead of making its way down, it'll kind of like do that, right? That's that little bump though, that's what it's representing, okay? So that's in the lateral leads. So leads one in AVL. Let's take a look at what's gonna happen over here on the transverse plane in our precordial leads, right? So once again, we have our left bundle is blocked, right? And so when signal comes down the AV node, it's gonna to try to go down that left bundle, it's gonna be blocked. It's gonna go down the right bundle and it's gonna depolarize kind of in a normal fashion through the right ventricle, okay? And then we're gonna get our late forces that are going all the way cell to cell to the lateral aspect. So what are we gonna see? Well, we're gonna see our lateral leads V5 and V6 are going to capture all of these late forces that are going from RV to LV. And so we will see very similarly, these leads will have kind of this double bump physiology, right? Representing the late forces heading that way. There's something else that I find really, really interesting about left bundle branch blocks that can that can be the last kind of nail in the coffin for you. So remember that the left bundle, the left bundle supplies these little fibers to the septum. So remember that the left bundle supplies the septum. And normally it causes septal depolarization from the left ventricle which is on the left side of the septum, to the right. And so usually, if you remember, what does that create? That creates our septal waves in V1 and V2, right? So and oftentimes in V1 mainly, but sometimes in V2, you get these initial R waves that are created by septal depolarization because it's the first part of the ventricle to depolarize off of the left bundle. So usually, we get a septal R wave, and then we get that deeper S wave that we usually see after, right? That's our normal depolarization. Well, remember, the left bundle is blocked. And so we no longer get septal activation from left to right. So what are we gonna lose? We are going to lose the septal R waves. And so you will see the loss of a septal R wave in V1, you will just see a straight negative wave. You will see negative wave in our QRS. And that negative wave is also going to somewhat represent, you know, this the ending of that wave, this slurring of that wave, is going to represent the forces that are going where? That are going away. Right? Remember, the forces that are going from the right to left ventricle are going away from V1 and V2. So we should see deep, slurry, negative, slurred, negative waves in the QRS in V1 and V2 with a loss of the septal R, right, because that left bundle will supply the septal R. So let's briefly recount what we're going to see. We are going to see the QRS widen greater than 120 milliseconds because the aberrant conduction throughout the ventricles. 
and we're going to see late forces in the lateral leads because we have lateral activation late because that lateral left bundle branch is blocked. So we'll see maybe these R prime waves that are going to occur in our lateral leads, which are leads 1, AVL, V5, V6. And then you also see, which I think is just beautiful, the loss of a septal R. You will no longer have a septal R because the left bundle that supplies the septum is blocked. And so let's go through some ECGs, these, these awesome ECGs here, and talk about it. So here we have a sinus rhythm. You can see we have P waves that are conducting to our QRS. There's our P, there's our P conducting to the QRS. When I measure the duration of my QRS complex, I see my QRS is wide. It's greater than 120 milliseconds. And because this is a sinus rhythm, I know that signal is going from the sinus node to the AV node, and the AV node is passing it down. So I'm like, why is this wide? Well, it must be conducted apparently. And so I look for bundle branch blocks, and so what do I see? I see in my lateral leads, leads 1 and leads AVL. If you look at my QRS morphology, you can see it has a nice sharp uptick, but on the way down, it, it kind of has that little double bump. And you can see it again in AVL. You can see it kind of shows, it shows me some late lateral forces, right? So I'm like, okay, let me go to my other lateral leads, V5 and V6. And what do I see? I see an R, and then I see an R prime. There's my kind of my R prime. I can see it a little bit here in V6, R, R prime. It's my R prime, telling me more evidence that I'm getting late lateral activation. And I really want to confirm the diagnosis, and I remember that if my left bundle branch is blocked, it's also going to block my septal R wave in V1. And so if you look really closely, look, there's no septal R wave. And so we know that since this is a sinus rhythm with a wide QRS, with evidence of forces that are late in the lateral leads going from RV to LV, late positive forces in the lateral leads, and no septal R wave, this is diagnostic of a left bundle branch block. Let's go to our next rhythm. Here we have another sinus rhythm. You can see in front of my QRSs, I've got P waves that are conducting to these QRS complexes. You can see that the QRS complex, if I measure it, is very wide. My QRS is wide. It's greater than 120 milliseconds, or three small boxes. And so I'm like, well, why is the signal that is being passed from the AV node down into the ventricles being conducted slowly? And so I think about right bundle branch blocks, or I think about left bundle branch blocks. In this case, I see that in lead one, in the lead AVL, which are my lateral leads, I've got this R, R prime. I've got that little R prime. My AVL, I've got this R, R prime. So this tells me I've got lay forces going towards the lateral leads. You can see that also in my precordial lateral leads, V5 and V6, you can see that little R prime. And then you can see in V6, it just, it doesn't have the R prime, but you can kind of see it buried in there, right? Look how it's just like kind of slurred. It's like, it's still getting signal late, right? That is still good late signal. Anytime you see that kind of slurry positive V6, that's still telling you late signal going towards the lateral lead. And then you're like, well, I know the left bundle branch, if it was blocked, I would likely lose my septal R wave. And so you look at that. No septal R wave in V1. And so all of that together in the setting of a sinus rhythm is a left bundle branch block. But we also know that left bundle branch blocks can occur in any other type of, uh, you know, we'll say um, arrhythmia where signal is still being passed down from my AV node to the ventricles. 
And so look at this rhythm. We've got kind of this group beating phenomenon here. But you can see there are P waves before the QRS complexes. There are P waves before the QRS complexes. What is actually happening is these, the second P wave in the groups, these P waves are premature atrial contractions, right? <clears throat> They're PACs. And so we know that PACs are from some, you know, focus somewhere else in the atria that fire off and they depolarize the atria and it's early. Well that depolarization is received by the AV node and sent down to the ventricles and that's why our QRS complexes remain the same. If I look at the width of these QRS complexes though you'll notice that my QRS complex in all of these beats is wide. It's greater than 120 milliseconds. It's wide for my normal beats. It's wide for my premature atrial contraction beats. So you're like, well, there must be some type of ventricular aberrancy. And so what you'll see, if I look at my lateral leads here, I'm like, well, what is the bundle branch block that's occurring? You see I've got this uptick, and then you see I have it kind of slurry on the way down. Right? That's a little bit of the evidence of that late force is going towards the lateral leads. As you can see in AVL, slurry on the way down. Right, More evidence of late RV2 LV activation, forces going towards those leads, and the timing of them is late because of the bundle branch block. You can see it in V5 and V6. You can see that R, and you can see little R prime, and you can see it here, R, R prime. Right, and so this is all evidence of late forces. So you're like, let's look at my septum and see if I have loss of my septal R wave. We actually don't have complete loss of the septal R wave here. So not a complete loss, and that's okay, right? Not everyone's conduction system is the exact same. But what I do want you to note is that, remember we said that we could also have these really slurry S waves that take forever to get back to the baseline? Well, there it is. That's our slurred S wave in V1, and we also have it in V2, right? And that's because, remember, when those forces are going towards the left ventricle, remember when they're going towards the left ventricle, from the right ventricle, in our precordial leads, that is captured negatively in V1 and V2. So that's why that happens. And let's look at our last ECG. So now we have a rhythm here. It's a wide complex rhythm, but notice how irregular it is. We have like some fast beats and some not fast beats and some kind of fast beats and some really fast beats. And so um, this is an example of atrial fibrillation. In atrial fibrillation, as you all might know, if you don't, we have a lecture on that too, is when the atria are kind of just sending signal all over the place, but the AV node is a bystander in this arrhythmia. And so signals will bump into the AV node when they are fibrillating through the atria, and the AV node will say, okay, I'm going to send that signal down to the ventricles. And so when it captures that signal, it sends it down to the ventricles via the Hisperkinji system. And so we should see a QRS complex that is, you know, kind of normal. Well, in this case, we don't. We see that our QRS complex is wide, right? My QRS complex is wide. It's greater than 120 milliseconds. And so I'm like, well, if this is AFib, which I know it is, and that AV node is sending that signal down, what about that conduction from the AV node to the ventricles is aberrant? And so I'm thinking maybe there's a bundle branch block. And so I look for my bundle branch block patterns. And I see that in lead one and in lead AVL, we have this R, and then we have that little late R prime. Same thing in AVL. We kind of have that uptick, and then look how long it takes for that to get back down. It takes forever for it to get back down. That slurriness is that evidence of those late forces going in that direction. And you can look in V5 and V6. V5, you only get a little bit of that R, and then you see a little R prime, but you see it best in V6. You get that R, and then you see that kind of late forces heading in the direction of V6. So you're like, well, I wonder if we lost our septal R wave. We sure did, right? 
lost the septal R wave, and we have that deep slurry S wave that we see in the setting of a left bundle branch block. So remember, left bundle branch blocks can occur in any arrhythmia that sends signal down to the AV node, just like a fib does. We can also see this in like a flutter. We can see this in supraventricular tachycardias, ectopic atrial tachycardias, um, bradycardias, junctional rhythms, right? There's all sorts of reasons why. But at the end of the day, we got to recognize where the conduction is coming from and where it's going to, and why is it going to the ventricles apparently in this pattern, right? And so um, understanding the anatomy is, I think, the best way to recognize these patterns. And so um, if there's one thing that you should drill down, it's these two um, structures here, because not all bundle branch blocks are created equal. Some of them will be, you know, there could be coexisting blocks. So understanding the the anatomy is really going to help you all. This is just developing a framework so that when you go through uh, my ECGs of the day and you get to get reps and reps and reps, you can sort of learn the nuances. So I hope this helps you. If you have questions about these rhythms, please reach out, comment, send me messages. Um, I think my email is on um, the home screen of um, the YouTube channel. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and um, think about subscribing to the channel if you did. Um, See you on the next video. Have a great rest of your day.